This is the all new Fedora 42 and this might be the most exciting Fedora update in a while. I've been playing with Fedora 42 since it hit beta and it's bringing many cool things. A futuristic new installer, a slew of next gen performance boosts, groundbreaking gaming improvements, GNOME 48 and a new surprise spin this time around that you'll absolutely love using. I'm really enjoying using this new Fedora. Yeah, this release is a total game changer. So let's jump right in. Starting off with the biggest change that we see in Fedora 42, we get GNOME Desktop version 48 here. Just take a look at this, soak it in. This new wallpaper gives a vivid and cheery look to Fedora 42. And GNOME 48 is an absolutely loaded update in itself. It brings many big things like improved HDR support, dynamic triple buffering, explicit sync tech and some other really cool things. Visually, GNOME is introducing completely new default fonts. Advaita Sans replaces Cantarel as the new default font on GNOME. There have been polishing touches here and there. GNOME 48 brings better Wayland support now, with a lot of legacy XL1 baggage deprecated with this version. This GNOME update also improves the explicit sync tech that was introduced in GNOME 46.1. That combined with the newly introduced triple buffering tech is set to make the display butter smooth. The status menu has been slightly improved. There is one big update that I'm absolutely excited for, which we'll see in a bit. The Fedora project is introducing a new member to the Fedora Spins family. System76 in development Cosmic Desktop is officially available with Fedora now. Cosmic Desktop environment is a significant shift in System76 approach to desktop Linux, moving away from a modified GNOME. Cosmic Desktop is a completely new desktop environment written from scratch in Rust. This new desktop environment has created a lot of hype and intrigue in the Linux community. There's actually a lot of noise surrounding this. And with this, Fedora gives you an official way of trying this new desktop out. Cosmic Desktop initially feels similar to GNOME, but once you start using it, it's a very different user experience. But what you'll really enjoy with Cosmic Desktop is the performance. By leveraging Rust programming languages, advanced memory management and performance oriented features, Cosmic is set to redefine user experiences on Linux. And we have already seen Cosmic perform noticeably snappier than the standard GNOME desktop even in its alpha state. Cosmic desktop also comes with a powerful tiling mechanism. I'm not just talking about window snapping. The tiling mechanism here is powerful and deeply customizable. But at the same time, it's not overwhelming. It's not a tiling window manager. Cosmic Desktop also comes with a flexible customization engine that lets you tweak this around to make it better suit you. Obviously, we don't have GNOME extensions level of customization here, but it's good enough for the initial release. One huge advantage that Cosmic Desktop has over GNOME, KD Plasma and pretty much every existing desktop right now is that Cosmic Desktop is built exclusively for the Wayland display server. Cosmic Desktop just doesn't have the legacy constraints of needing to support X11. This deliberate choice allows Cosmic to use the full power of modern protocols resulting in smoother rendering, enhanced security and robust support for technologies like multi-monitor support. Technically, this is a huge plus point for Cosmic Desktop. Cosmic Desktop is here to stay and Fedora is one of the earliest adopters of this phenomenal desktop environment. GNOME 48 introduces the new well-being panel in the settings application. This is designed to help you monitor and manage your screen time. The well-being feature here in GNOME lets you see your daily device usage times and set daily limits to promote healthier digital habits. This is turned off by default. You are going to see screen time data for the last few weeks here and you can set screen time limits as well. Once you hit that limit, you will see a notification informing you to stop using the device. You can also turn on this grayscale option where once the time limit is hit, your screen loses all colors and just becomes grayscale. This is something that I really care about. In this distracted age where billions of dollars are being poured into making us more hooked, more lost in our screens, features like these give us the power to make a conscious decision to actually live our lives and not just spend it staring at screens. I think maybe in the future, they should also provide a hard limiting option that maybe cuts off your device access completely once the time limit is hit. I think time limits for specific apps or even websites would also be a great addition here. Obviously, this is the first iteration, but this is a phenomenal start and I'm sure this is going to enable people to have healthier relationships with their computer. We also get eyesight reminders and movement reminders here that reminds you to take a quick walk around and maybe stretch a bit. 
I have found huge benefits by utilizing Android's digital well-being feature and I just love that I'm going to get that self overwatch and just a reminder to look away from my screen on my computer as well. Fedora 42 brings a significant overhaul to its installation process with the debut of the new Anaconda Web UI installer. From every angle, this is an upgrade compared to the old Fedora installer. I mean this is so quick, so simple, you install Fedora in just 4 steps and that takes less than 30 seconds. I always appreciated Ubuntu's installer for being simple, but the operation flow in the Anaconda Web UI installer, Fedora just kills it. It's easily the most user-friendly installer a Linux distro has. This UI gives you step-by-step task-oriented pages that guide you through the installation. And one thing that I really like here is the disk partitioning. This is very clear. You select the disk you want to use, if you have multiple ones like me, the installer gives you multiple partitioning options and it gives you a clear idea of what you need to do here. I think this is going to be very helpful for people who are new to Fedora. But advanced options are not yet exposed here, but the developers are aware of those and they will be seen here in subsequent releases. It also has a nice installation progress window that briefly tells you where exactly in the installation process you are. Anaconda Web UI Installer is a great step in making Fedora user-friendly and more accessible to users. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. There is huge news for Plasma users. Fedora 42 just promoted the KDE Plasma version of Fedora to the official edition status for the first time. That's right, Plasma is no longer just a spin but a full-fledged flagship along the workstation version which features GNOME. This has some implications, big and small. Fedora Plasma version will now be prominently featured on the main Fedora website, similar to the GNOME Workstation Edition. It won't be hidden in the spin section. When I heard the news, I actually thought why this step hadn't been taken earlier. Plasma is extremely customizable, it's blazing fast, and it's very polished. It should have been ascended here way earlier in my opinion. And for people who want to use Fedora, this is going to give better visibility to the options they have. One of Fedora 42's most impactful changes is a revamped package manager under the hood. DNF, the trusty and sometimes slow package manager has been reborn as DNF5. DNF5 is not just an incremental update, but it's a complete rewrite of the popular package manager in C++ in place of the old Python-based package manager. This means faster performance, a smaller memory footprint and overall a better package management experience on Fedora. While rewriting a Python project in C++ should dramatically speed up its operation and hands on, I did notice a speed boost up but it's not as big as some people out there are claiming it to be. And it makes sense. In package installation, the bottleneck is your internet speed, not the CPU processing necessarily. Package management on Fedora has always been very harmonious. But speed, yeah, we could have had a bit more of it and it's here. DNF5 is a major milestone and a phenomenal step in making Fedora software management faster and more efficient. Thanks to the updated compositor in GNOME 48, we finally get the much-awaited dynamic triple frame buffering tech in Fedora 42. This has generated a lot of noise in the Linux community as it's showing almost 100% frame rendering improvements in certain scenarios. This feature, primarily developed by Canonical's Daniel Van Wacht over the past 4 years, significantly enhances the rendering performance, especially on systems with lower-end GPUs like Intel Integrated Graphics and Raspberry Pi hardware. Dynamic triple buffering activates when the previous frame is delayed, which would have caused stuttering and lagginess, especially in high graphics demand scenarios. Then, dynamic triple buffering mechanism activates and it can double frame rates in those situations. Things like GNOME's Activities Overview animations, Application Switching animations, the menu animations and many other effects in GNOME Desktop that can sometimes stutter now will look fluid smooth on the same hardware. Dynamic triple buffering is also an on-demand feature that engages only when necessary, so this doesn't cause unnecessary load on the GPU and unnecessary power consumption. This feature is so technically sound that Ubuntu has been incorporating this feature independently way before it made its way into GNOME. 
Fedora 42 isn't only about flashy desktop features and visuals. It also comes with a slew of core system optimizations that make the whole system faster and more efficient. These changes might not be immediately visible, but you will feel them in everyday use. The biggest shift with Fedora 42 is that it now builds its packages with x86-64 v2 as the baseline for 64-bit architecture. This is a defined micro-architecture level in 64-bit instruction set used to build applications targeting the newer chips that makes the software run faster. Yeah, I know, I know, nobody likes it when I use fancy words. In plain English, this means Fedora is now optimized for PCs made in the last decade, that is post-2008 CPUs, and very old 64-bit chips will no longer be supported. The upside is noticeable speedups in applications. Fedora 42 also brings RPM copy on write support, so installing and updating packages on BTRFS is more efficient. This is actually disabled by default, but you can go ahead and enable it. And if enabled, the system uses file system ref links instead of copying files, significantly reducing disk I.O. and CPU usage during updates. Once this is enabled by default, Fedora will start showing much quicker and lower head updates. And this is going to be great for performance as well as SSD lifespan. Fedora 42 also comes with improved explicit sync tech where applications directly manage and coordinate tasks between CPU and GPU to ensure that rendering of frames occurs in correct sequence, preventing issues like screen flickering or visual glitches, mainly with NVIDIA GPUs. Wayland sessions could be, let's just say, not the greatest with NVIDIA hardware. With this explicit sync technology, people with NVIDIA GPUs will see improved frame pacing, less flickering, and other visual glitches. And this will benefit both graphics intense tasks like gaming as well as general desktop responsiveness. AMD and Intel users also see marginal gains and the reduced overhead of explicit sync boosts efficiency across Vulkan and VA API pipelines. Fedora 42 comes with the Linux kernel 6.14 and this kernel is bringing one huge performance advancement in the gaming department. This kernel brings the all-new NT-Sync driver which particularly boosts Windows games running on Linux via Wine or Proton. Traditionally, Wine used to emulate Windows synchronization mechanisms in user space which introduced severe bottlenecks with modern multi-threaded games. The new NT-Sync driver addresses this by implementing synchronization directly within the Linux kernel which results in significant reduction of overhead and much more precise emulation of Windows synchronization behaviors. This improvement results in smoother gameplay experience with reduced stutter and latency. And we are not talking about minimal performance gains here and there. You can test this out on your computer and the FPS improvements are substantial. People are seeing up to 600% increase in Dirt 3. Yeah, you heard that right. 600, not 6, not 60, 600% increment in frames per second. Resident Evil 2 is showing around 200% FPS improvement, Forza Horizon 5 around 50%, Call of Juarez has doubled its FPS. Yeah, the results we are seeing here is substantial. The Linux gaming community, as you might expect, has gone absolutely bonkers with this thing. So Fedora 42 is going to be a big update for Linux gamers. Fedora 42 also brings a significant advancement in high dynamic range or HDR support. This is set to enhance the visual experience of users with compatible displays. In the settings application, under display, if you have a HDR supported monitor, you will get a dedicated option to enable or disable the HDR mode. This HDR mode should be treated as a very initial introduction to it, but support is confirmed for AMD GPUs and Nvidia driver version 550.54 onwards. Right now, HDR support on browsers is very limited on Linux and I don't think any major browser for Linux lets you view HDR content on the web. But you can use the MPV media player to watch your own HDR content. This is a very big news for us display enthusiasts because in the near future, we will see significant improvements in the visual quality of the desktop experience. We'll be getting enhanced colors and contrast, sharper and cleaner displays. And for a long time, HDR was mostly a feature on Windows and Mac OS. You could see how certain displays would look so good on those systems. With this, Fedora 42 is going to level the playing field by offering us the same kind of advanced display quality. This update too has trickled down from GNOME 48. Fedora 42 Atomic versions like Fedora Silverblue and Keonite bring in a huge system change. By integrating Compose FS, Fedora 42 Atomic ensures that the root file system is truly read-only 
This design prevents unauthorized modifications, improving the system security and stability. Starting with Fedora 42, atomic desktops will no longer be built for the PowerPC 64LA architecture. Also, Fedora Atomic rebasing process has been improved now, giving us a smoother upgrade path. But that's not all. Fedora 42 brings many updates to packages, libraries, compilers and everything else. And it's a better than ever Fedora experience yet. For developers, there are latest tool chains like GCC 15, LLVM 20 and Python 3.13. Fedora 42 is shaping up to be a truly fresh and forward looking release. While there are no in your face changes here, it nonetheless brings in those iterative improvements. But this update is mainly about performance and that under the hood tech upgrade. This time I'm particularly excited to set up Steam and get some gaming done here. Well, there you have it. Everything new and everything improved in Fedora 42. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.